as strange as it might sound, there are more than just Nvidia in the stock market. Hey there, Tom here from FibonacciTraders.com here with the daily market recap. Like, subscribe, and let's see the charts. So let's see what Spy and Friends brought us in the past trading day, August 26. Spy ended up the day to the downside, 0.24. And as we can see in the past six, seven trading days, not much of a price action on the SPY. We are stuck below this trend line. This trend line goes up. And as long as the SPY is stuck below it or preferably above it, we are, we are going up. But 554, 553, all this area is the support below it. The gap at the 545 and the 535 will get filled. And in my opinion, the sooner these two gaps will get filled, the better for the bulls in going into Q4 of 2024. RSP ended up the day basically on the zero. And as you can see, trend lines, Fibonacci support and resistance are the true roadmap for future price action. Look at this trend line. Helps us identify the higher highs. RSP new intraday all-time highs now the 172 173 is the support we have this gap at the 169 area but we are bullish on the weekly bullish on the daily bullish on the four hours long continuation until proven otherwise this kind of candle every time rsp went into this trend line it got rejected and we got ourselves some kind of a pullback will it happen the same time this time 173 needs to hold qqq one percent to the downside but if you look left you zoom out you can clearly see in the past seven eight trading days nothing much under the qqq very tight price action 473 is the support 48 484 is the resistance below it below the 473 which is also the upper border of the yellow zone we are heading to close the gap at the 465. This gap might get filled after Nvidia's earnings. Anything can happen after Nvidia's earnings. The market can go up, the market can go down. Doesn't matter what we think about the market. It doesn't matter what we think about the results. The only thing that matters is what the market thinks and what the market will do post Nvidia's earnings. Long continuation above the 484. And this gap at the 493 will get filled. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Which gap will get filled first on the QQQ? The 465 or the 493? Dow Jones ended up green with a doji. New intraday all-time highs on the Dow Jones. Now the 409 area is the support. Long continuation above. 414, 415, we will see 423 and 433, 60. This kind of doji, we might get some kind of a pullback. 48, 408, 409 area needs to hold the support. We do have here this gap. And in my opinion, the sooner the down gaps will get filled, the better it will be for the bulls. IWM ended up the day basically on the zero. As you can see, the 221 area is like a magnet to price section. It was a magnet to price section during middle of July until end of July, two weeks. Price section just hover above and below the 220 area. Now in the past two trading days, once again, the 220, 221, tough resistance, long continuation. And yes, we are heading north to the 228 as long as 216 is holding a support bullish on all time frames on the iwm bitcoin for the time that i'm recording this video nothing much as you can see last friday broke above the yellow zone now hovering above it and below the 65 100 bullish on the daily bullish on the weekly we are starting to get here some kind of an uptrend we can take trend line that helps us identify the uptrend and as you can see short-term uptrend channel until proven otherwise ethereum stuck ethereum is just stuck below hovering above and below 
the lower border of the yellow zone, the 2680 area, the 2670. But we have here some kind of uptrend, short-term uptrend. Let's see if this uptrend can hold. Above 2840, we're heading north to the 3000. Still bearish on three out of four time frames on the Ethereum, which means no long for now on Ethereum. Magnificent 7, 1.3% to the downside. Should it still be Magnificent 7? In my opinion, long due or overdue this name the magnificent seven it should be magnificent six or just replace one of them into a really magnificent other stocks there are plenty of other stocks that we can include inside the magnificent seven but i am not this etf manager if it was up to me i will change at least one of them and we will talk about it Magnificent 7, 1.3% to the downside. 44.20 is the support. 45.60 resistance. The upper board of the yellow zone, very tough resistance. Breaking above it. And we are heading north to close these two gaps at the 46.50 and the 47.50. Breaking below the 44.20. And this gap at the 42.80 will get filled, in my opinion. And, it all, and once again, it's only my opinion. As a bullish myself, I prefer to close the gaps to the downside first and then trend reversal back to the upside. SOXX 2.5% to the downside. Same price section as the Magnificent 7. One gap to the downside, two gaps to the upside. Let's see. 221 area now needs to hold the support, closing this gap, holding a support, and then next leg up below the 221.30. 208 and 192.90 of course all depends on nvidia xbi green on the day 0.19 bullish on all time frames continues to move sideways holding above the, the 100 as long as 100 is holding we're set to go higher towards the 103 and 107 breaking below the 100 we are going back to the 97.60 to the downside, Apple ended up the day green, 0.15, but as you can see, in the past two weeks or so, Apple is not doing nothing. The good side on Apple is the positive side, no gaps to the downside. All this area that we can take Fibonacci in the last 21 trading days. And as we can see, all this area, the 223 area, holding a support, 228.30, very tough resistance, very tight price action. Now let's see price action breaking above the 228, going towards closing the gap at the 232. 222 area needs to hold the support, otherwise back to the upper border of the yellow zone, retesting it as support. Microsoft ended up the day 0.8% of the downside, continues to slide down on the lower border of this broadening formation bearish on all time frames on microsoft which means if you're looking to go long on microsoft just look here bearish on all time frames no long at least we want the four hours and the daily returning green and then we might reassess going long on microsoft nvidia how can we not talk about nvidia 2.25 percent to the downside but look at this consolidation one week of consolidation since monday 19th august 19th consolidation one day up one day down inside candles very tight price action the market is waiting for nvidia's earnings to say its word and once again it doesn't matter what we think about the company it doesn't matter what we will think about the numbers whether the numbers are good in our opinion or not good in our opinion the only thing that matters is how the market mr market will react to those numbers and no one knows how the market will react 
there are expectations from the market, there are expectations from the broader analysis, from, from the broader market, but Mr. Market has its own opinion. It can go down, closing the gap at the 111 and way down to the 106. And it can go up 156, 196 in the coming days after the earnings. We don't know. This is why as traders, we do not. I say it again. This is what I do. You do you. Do, you do you. I'm not holding open positions going into earnings. Now, if Nvidia will break above, if market will react positively to Nvidia's earnings, yes, we can head towards the 156 in the coming days post earnings. Breaking below the 122 area, bad reaction from Mr. Market and this gap will get filled. Meta 1.3% to the downside. Meta have here some kind of a double top scenario. The 544 area, very tough resistance. It was resistance at the peak of July. And once again, here we have two peaks, which means double top scenario and Meta breaking below the 508. And we are heading south to the 485. Google, green on the day, still stuck inside the yellow zone between the 167 and the 165 area long continuation only at least two days breaking above the 167 one one why two days because it's a very tough resistance area and one candle same as we had last tuesday august 20 did not change the overall sentiment it did not change the sentiment that the 167, the upper border of the yellow zone, is a tough resistance. So I will wait for at least two trading days above the 167. Amazon ended up the day on the red side, 0.9% to the downside. You know this yellow trend line, downtrend, until proven otherwise. We've been following this trend line in the past few trading days, even weeks. I don't remember when we drew it, but still acting as a very tough resistance. Trend lines and Fibonacci. That's it. This is your roadmap for future price action. None of these indicators, none of them will give you where price might be heading next. All of them, without any exceptions, are lagging behind price. I can look with my eyes with nothing on the chart i know that the price of amazon went from 200 to 150 back to 175 i can look with my eyes my problem as a trader our problem as traders is where price might be heading next trend lines and fibonacci look at the upper border of the yellow zone the 175 area look how strong support but look at this trend line very tough resistance you want to go long on Amazon, you need to wait for at least two days breaking above and closing above the yellow zone and above the 181 area. Amazon for now looks like it's heading south to close this gap at the 172.50. AMD another day, 3.2% to the downside. Fibonacci and trend lines. Fibonacci and trend lines. You remember the trend lines? You remember these trend lines? Now we are already three out of four time frames bearish on AMD. The 146.70, the upper border of the yellow zone, needs all the support. We can take also the last 34 trading days. And as you can see, since last Tuesday, we talked about this doji of the upper border of the yellow zone. You're more than welcome to go back to the daily recap from last Tuesday, August 20. And you will see, we talked about this doji of the upper border of the yellow zone. We said pullback incoming. And here we are. We are already pulling back 
four trading days now the 147 area needs all the support below it we're heading south to the 136 and yes i will not take open positions i will not open new positions and i will not go into nvidia's earnings with any semiconductors into nvidia's earnings whether it's broadcom amd doesn't matter it's semiconductor the nvidia earnings will affect on the whole sector of the semiconductors tesla 3.2 percent to the downside tesla still struggling with this red line you know this red line because you follow me on youtube and on twitter and if you're still not following me on youtube and twitter you're missing a hell of a lot free information free valuable information so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and follow me on twitter all the links in the description below tesla still struggling with this red line still sliding down day by day lower lows lower highs breaking below the yellow zone heading for now until proven otherwise tesla is heading south to the 201 should tesla still be a part of the magnificent seven in my opinion no the rest of the magnificent seven look at apple one inch away from all-time highs microsoft looking pretty good not so bad as tesla 13 percent from all-time highs nvidia is nvidia one inch of all-time highs meta stuck at all-time highs google also had all-time highs just one month ago less than one month ago and now 13 percent from new from all-time highs amazon not so far from all-time highs tesla ladies and gentlemen 40 something percent from all-time highs 50 percent from all-time highs and still going down so is it apart from magnificent seven maybe in the future but for now in my opinion so many better looking stocks i'm not talking about the company i'm talking about the stock sometimes the stock does not represent the company think about it palantir looks much better than tesla on the technical side three percent to the downside we've been talking about this top in the past few trading days in the past few trading stock market daily recaps we said if bulls will fail to break above the 33 bears will come in and here we are broke to the downside now the 30 80 30 60 area is the support below it back to the 2860 retesting the the upper border of the yellow zone it was a very tough resistance it needs to re get retested as support netflix 0.2 percent to the upside netflix holding strong look at netflix and compare it to tesla only on the technical side netflix just one week ago new all-time highs now holding strong above this 680 685 with a doji next leg up 711 and 745 shopify 1.6 percent to the downside still struggling and hovering below this trend line the upper border of this bull uh, broadening formation the 74 is the support below it this gap will get filled and then 70 80 to the downside we're starting to get bearish on the lower time frames still bullish on the daily bullish on the weekly is this the time to go long on shopify in my opinion no 
In my opinion, we need to wait for two scenarios, breaking above the 77 area or waiting for this gap to get filled, holding above the 71 area and looking for a trend reversal back up. SMCI, 8.3% to the downside, breaking below a very important area of support, the 583. Downtrend continuation and we are heading south back to the 480. Micro strategy, 2% to the downside, stuck inside the yellow zone since beginning of August. And once we are inside the yellow zone, it's a no trading zone. Long continuation only breaking above the 153 area, at least two trading days. And then we will see 164 breaking below the 143 area, the 50% retracement. And we are back to the 133. AVGO, Broadcom holding above the upper border of the yellow zone, the 158 area. Breaking down and under. 152 and 147 and yes broad broadcom we also get effect from nvidia's earnings eli Lilly, 0.2 percent to the downside but eli Lilly in the past we can say in the past two trading weeks nothing much on eli Lilly. very tight price section 222 is the support 272 is the resistance long continuation and we will see 1033 once again, thank you very much for watching this video. If you find it helpful, like, subscribe, check the links in the description below. Join me on this magnificent journey on how to become a profitable trader. Until the next video, until the next live, stay safe.